Good afternoon, my name is Okomi Koji and welcome to the Pedophilia Radiography Challenge. We have here Mr. Babarola Fajabi, the CEO of Bahaj Group. Welcome sir. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Thank you very much. My name is Babarola Fajabi. And just as you said, the chairman and chief executive of the staff of Bahaj Group. I'm 45 years old. I'm a Christian and I'm married with children. Thank you. So, how do you spend most of your time? Yes, um, most of my time I spent it on uh, my research about my work. And uh, I'm also privileged to uh, study many books. Sometimes I go to other books like some of those novels to read some of them and then get some inspiration about it. And then, and then uh, on weekends I go for a preaching as a Christian. Okay. So when we talk about backfire group, is this where you thought you'd be today? Um, well, I don't really think or give it to. Uh, I think I, I never think it's going to be this way before. But we can go, we have a uh, final set in this, uh, at this level, and we are confident that the future is bright. Why did I say so? It's because of some of the challenges we face in the past. You know, when you start a company, you will uh, expect to move fast. But because of some of these challenges, at the time you think that maybe you are even getting it wrong or you got it wrong. But somehow, because you find a way of solving some problem, then See as so everything is with the grace of God. Yes. Okay. So what used to be and is still your biggest weakness? Mm, what I think used to be my weakness is uh, investment. I'm addicted to investment and it's still my weakness of the today. I like investing. So I think that is my biggest regret. So, um, what are you most proud of? Can you tell us what you're most proud of? Besides the Black Fight Group, I know you're really proud of that. So, what else are you most proud of? Yes, I am proud of being what I am to be a Christian, a father, and then an entrepreneur. At the same time, I am proud of the fact that. Um, I'm privileged to inspire some young men, young, young uh, uh, vibrant coming up men like that. So many of them will come to me and say, Isabella, we like the way you do your things. And I believe my friends, that is my colleagues in so many departments are proud of me as well. I'm privileged to uh, secure in landmark achievement in so many departments and so I believe this is um, one of the So you're a good inspiration to a lot of people. Exactly. Okay. So what um, professional organizations are you associated with aside from the group? Like with which other one like can you tell us more? Mm, like you said, you know when you say group, yeah. that means there are other companies. Companies are there. And they me. Is one of the uh, Bipedia, the Sasa, Bafaj Investments, Bafaj uh, 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 Resources, the Villa de Villa Limited, Octave uh, Investment Limited, Bitcoin Investment Limited. These are companies that I'm sure I share with. So um, now let's take you 20 back 
Let's take you 20 years back, or maybe 30 years back. What do you think you knew at my age? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you are 23. Um, back then, when I was 23, I remembered I used to work with the uh, uh, state government, that is NTD, before the New Town Development Authority, as one of the project staff there. So that taught me a lot of uh, uh, knowledge about the survey department because it broadens my understanding of the survey. So that's some of the things I used to know there. I'm um, part of some of those, some of these people uh, that stayed with me. As in joining them in putting some of those layouts in place and things like that. So, if you could do it all over again, what do you think you would do differently? Well, uh, you know, back then, nobody knew. This area will be like this. And that was 22 years ago. I should have uh, been able to start moving towards the direction of uh, land acquisition. So we didn't bother to do that. Of course, I'm not living around this area again. I lived around this area inside the project. So I should have been able to move that way. That's right. We will not be factor there. Thanks. We will do it. So what, what are the things here that will make you move down? Like moving down here takes a whole lot. You don't just move down. What do you think? Yeah. We didn't just move down because we feel that back then this place does not have what it takes. That's like the electricity. Okay. That was uh, the only place that has electricity there was. Yeah. And there was no, it's like bush area. Yeah. It wasn't that um, developed like this then, you know. So, even then, not that people are not living around the place, right? We didn't just we are confined in, in that our area and everything there. We're very comfortable there. You know, because I just moving around and all the rest. So, what does um, empowerment mean to you? When you hear the word empowerment, what does it mean to you? Well, empowerment, it means, uh, to me, it means uh, leading by example. Because if you want to empower some people or somebody, you must need to lead by example and help them to see how they can get out of there and solve their problems. And then uh, that will mean they need to have knowledge about life. Because uh, uh, the scripture says that uh, my people are dying because they lack knowledge. So before you can empower someone, you must help them with knowledge. You must have sound knowledge of the Bible and sound knowledge of how things is done, you know, and somewhere else. So I can see you're a very, very good person. So how do you approach the unknown? On the same circumstance, like how do you approach it? Yeah, uh, when you say unknown, it's only God that knows all. And then this could also say that uh, God knows be a single thing, except if you have to reveal those things, or it's confidential matter to his servant, which is the prophet. And with the few knowledge of God that I have, uh, I'm not afraid of the future. Or no, it's very easy for me to understand what is going to happen in the next 200, 300, 500, or 5,000 years to come. Because the Bible gives us many inspirational ideas of what is going to look like. So what I just need to do is to you know, use my mentor, Jesus Christ. And then once I arrange myself with the way he taught, what he said in some areas. Um, it's easier for me to have it on. Okay. So how do you face risky situations? Well, um, 
mostly I pray to God. I commit all the activities in my life to God. And I can, I can tell you that I don't have not to be afraid of the things. I am not afraid of the things. Because I know we've got to them. Things will always get to work to you like that. I've asked for so much. So taking risk to me is, is if, I, if you cannot risk, you can't even move forward. In actual fact, let me tell you, sincerely speaking, even the water you drink or the air you breathe in is risky. So, what values are you committed to? I'm committed to uh, some of the values that five people portray that Christians should have. For instance, perseverance. You know, patience is all my focus dealing with my kind. I like to have patience with all things. And then, um, fear of God is one of the values I have. Which is the beginning of this. Also, um, the greatest value that I would like to commit myself to is that of the value of Jesus Christ. You know, the scripture says that He has left the model for us to follow His life closely. So if I follow Jesus Christ's model closely, I believe it's the greatest value a man can ever have. Yes. Okay, so looking at all you said, we know you have people who look up to you, people you look up to, people, your friends, close friends who are like you. So right now we need you to challenge two people for us, recommend two people for us that would also love to have this interview. Okay. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Um, I would like to challenge uh, three friends of mine. Okay. The first one is somebody who some city, I think I'll get him more. I would like him to be given up on this for this interview as well. Then, um, Honorable Kasi uh, Rasak. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that one too, I would like to tell him. Then, at the same time, one of my, one of my big value is the value of a village. I believe he has not been able to tell him. His name is uh, Chief Ramon Elemo. Okay, thank you, sir. Can you give us a few words? People from the younger generation, we need to just learn one or two things from you. Yes, um, as for the younger generation, yeah. they need to learn to be honest. Yes, honesty is very important because that has worked for me for years. You know, people that uh, does not know me in person, when they hear about me, they will say, oh, but I don't know how. But when they see me, they will say, is this the man? But what is it that has kept me so far is honesty. And then patient, the young one, the young one is to learn how to be patient. Like I said to you, it's all mark of God's delivery man. And if you are patient, if you are patient, you will see things work out well. Then you won't make hasty mistakes, you won't make much mistakes in your life. Then um, fear of God is very important in my life. It's the beginning of all wisdom. So the young one needs to learn those three values. And once they have those three values, it's kind of so like you said, you need to be honest, you need to have patience and also have the fear of God in you. It works very well. Those are the three core values we need to understand. Thank you very much, sir, for staying with us, for staying with and granting this interview for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, so much. Thank you all for listening and tune in for your next episode.